Hello, everybody. Uh, I know a lot about fear. I've experienced a lot of fear. And today I'd like to share uh, some of my experiences with you and also just talk about fear. And as well, the illusion of fear, the fear that we put into the universe and that we live in as, a, as an existence. This is your brain. When you experience fear in your brain, this little blue area, your sensory cortex fires up and immediately tries to decide, is this a real fear or is this just standing on stage a TEDx fear, <laughs> right? If it is a real fear, then your amygdala jumps in to protect you. It's like a, a man in your corner and it instantly floods your brain with these chemicals that put you in a fight or flight. That's the real value and the real need for our fear reflex. It's there to protect us from serious threats. And the beauty of that, or the non-beauty of that, is all of those memories are then stored in your amygdala because there's a base mark that protects you. So if you saw a poisonous snake and it almost bit you, you're going to have a little mark there in your brain going, avoid poisonous snakes, they will kill you. That's what the fear response is for. And so what most people don't realize about fear is fear slowly begins to control your life when you don't understand what it is. Talk about ancient stories, talk about uh, sailors traveling the world and having dragons and all these different fears. Those were there because something of fear happened and then it needed to be addressed or there needed to be a baseline of understanding how we made safety. So my experience in fear started when I was very young and what I know about fear is that fear only has power over you when you don't share it, when you hold it inside. And so I'm about to share with you the biggest fear that I have in my life. And it looks like that. Right? Most people, I just spent six months talking to people about fear, and, and I talked to hundreds of people all over the world. And here was the most interesting part about fear. The people in our country... Their two biggest fears are the fear of death and the fear of public speaking, which is crazy, right? I even met one guy who was an Uber driver who told me I would rather die than go on stage and share my passion. And I thought to myself, that's crazy, but also that's how powerful our fears are, that I would choose death than come up here and share with you my passion and my love. Now, I realized early on in my speaking career that fear did control my life. And I realized early on in my life that I had more fear than anybody else. And so I started asking myself, where, where did these fears come from? And I'll ask you, are there any fears in your life that are stopping you from moving forward? And if there are fears, what would happen if instead of running from them, you ran towards them? and you embrace them, and you replace them. Think about that. What would happen if you marched towards your fears with a plan of attack instead of retreat? Think about that for just one second. This is where my fear comes from. I came up in a home of abuse, and when I got in trouble, when I needed punishment, my parents locked me in the closet and left me there for hours. That was a normal punishment in my household. I never knew that that was not correct. But what it did to my body and my mind was fill me with tremendous fear and anxiety. And it really frightened me. And what I didn't know is that it was shrinking my hippocampus and it was making me less available to deal with emotions. I was less available to deal with, deal with fears because of my childhood. And so I did like every good American does, I found a way out. And my way out was breaking the law. I learned I could get out of my abusive home by committing crimes. And that worked great until I ended up there. And then it was a huge problem. I didn't wake up until I was 19 years old and I was in maximum security prison and I still had years left until I got out. I hadn't realized that the fears I had, the fears that were upon me, I was using them to build walls around me. I woke up in Folsom Prison and realized I put myself there. Yes, I'd been hurt. Yes, I'd been damaged. But each one of those angered actions was my action. I took control, and I ended up here. 
this is my biggest fear and my biggest failure. When I went here, I lost my family. I lost my son. I lost everything in my life. I mean, I was in prison. You can't get any lower than that. But it was in prison where I realized it was all me. I did it to myself, and I had to figure out a way to get out. But I was consumed with fears, everyday fears, common fears. I'm afraid of this, afraid of that. I was basically a traumatized human being. I didn't even know it. So I started going to college, and I started studying, and I started learning that there was this aura of fear around me. I had built this world of my own doing that put me in prison, and I decided to get out. I decided to make a change, and that came with education. I didn't know I was doing this to myself until I woke up. And one of the things that helped me wake up was this quote. And you know, this is Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the shortened version. This is the one we all hear in the face of fear. And I read this quote, and I was like, yes! But then I was like, but where are the tools? I cannot be afraid of fear, but I'm still afraid of fear, and I'm still full of fear, and there's still fear all over me. So how do I not recognize the fear that I'm supposed to, it just didn't make sense to me. And so I dug deeper, and I started realizing, well, wait a minute, I'm so full of fear, I'm so full of crap, I don't really know anything about me as a human being. I spent my life surviving on the streets. I spent my life surviving in emotional situations, but not sharing who I was. And luckily, on that journey, I met one man named Bob Shamrock. And Bob Shamrock cared about me as a human being. And Bob Shamrock said, listen, you have value, but you got to work for it. And this work you're doing now in prison, it's not going to be enough. And he gave me purpose to move forward, and he stood by me. And when this quote came up, I was searching for an answer, and I went, yeah, that's me. I'm going to deal with fear. But first, I needed some tools. So I read the rest of the quote. Most of us don't ever get that far. And this is the rest of the quote. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And this is where it gets really good. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes our needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I get it. Fear that is nameless doesn't work. Fear that is unreasoning, we've got to figure that out. Fear that is unjustified, we need to work on that. And so I began to dig deeper into what my fears were. What were the things that caused me to be who I was in prison? And that's when the fog started to lift. And I realized the anger and the pain in me, I took it out on the rest of the world. I put myself exactly where I deserved to be because of the pain that I was in. And then I had to figure out how to get out of that position and out of that pain. And that's when I started really bringing things down to the smallest level. You know, when you're in prison and you're trying to survive, it's as simple as this. You find a group, you get with the group, and they become your protectors. They're usually a prison gang. But somebody's got to look after you because when you're alone, it is the scariest existence you can ever imagine. You are literally alone on this journey. Well, I wasn't alone because Bob Shamrock had never left me. So I had hope out there. Many people didn't. And when I read this, I tried to boil it down to its simplest form. This was too big for me. My brain's very simple. And this is what I came up with. This is my method. We're, I use it for everything. In fact, I just used it for this talk because I had to get down into, is it justified or irrational that I am scared to death on this TEDx stage? Probably not. But here's how the formula works. Got fear. My fear was fighting. I was going to choose to become a professional fighter to get myself out of prison. That was my exit. So here's the formula. Got fear. Yes, I was horribly afraid of fighting. Name it. I'm afraid of fighting. There it is. Decide if it's reasonable. Is it reasonable that I'm afraid of fighting? Yeah. I don't know how to fight. <laughs> I don't have any training. I have no understanding of how to protect myself. That's perfectly reasonable. And number three, is it, is it justified? Yes, my fear was justified, and the fact that I needed to do that to be successful was justified. So there was only one answer, move forward, right? Move forward. And that's what FDR says. When you condense this, this formula can be applied to anything. Got fear? Name it. 
If you don't name your fears, you don't even know why you're afraid. And that was me when I was in prison. I didn't even understand what I was afraid of until I started naming stuff. And then I got real serious because then I realized all the problems that were wrong with me. But in the meantime, this is how you keep going because it is what it is. When you have nothing left, when there is no hope, there's just moving forward. And all you need is one person to care, one person to step forward and show you another way or another opportunity to move forward. That one person for me was Bob Shamrock. And he gave me the value. But more than that, he never left. So even though I went to prison, even though all that stuff happened to me, he stood by me and said, listen, when you get out, there's an opportunity for you. And it looked like that. I became a professional fighter. Now, I'll be honest with you, it was scarier to become a fighter than it was to be a prisoner. And I would have easily turned away from that had I been given the chance. But my dad, he eventually adopted me. He said, no, 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 here we go. And so I began to deal with the fear that now I was going to become a professional fighter. How do you deal with that? That's pretty challenging. I don't know how many professional fighters we have in the room. It's incredibly stressful. And so I started spreading out my wings. I started being honest with people. Listen, I'm terribly afraid of what we're going to do here. And this drives me crazy. And so I started sharing my fears. And it was in the sharing of those fears that my community came to support me. Where it was one man, it then became five. And then 500. And eventually, it became millions of people supporting what I was doing. And on that journey of learning martial arts, I learned to speak. I learned to teach and interact with other people. And when we joined our missions together and we spoke about these fears, we shared the same fears. They didn't know how to fight. I didn't know how to fight. We came together. We built this community that eventually became the fuel to my success. It was the millions of people behind me that believed in me that helped me push forward. And in fact, I had so much success that when I was 37 years old, I retired. I had become a, uh, a broadcaster. I would become a league owner. Like I would literally done everything I ever imagined. And I was able to retire and, and go home, try to raise another family. And I remember I failed my son 20 years earlier. So this is 20 years later. I have a little girl. She's born, and I realized that my life purpose is not beating people up. It's not making money. It's redoing these memories and redoing this experience, both for me and for my daughter. So that's what I committed to. And every day I woke up and I was like, yes! But the fear and the pain and the shame of what happened to me didn't go away. All the success that I achieved, it didn't stop how I felt inside. So I had to keep moving forward. And I had to find ways to embrace those fears. I'm not proud to say this, but I would wake up early in the mornings and cry by myself because of the pain I felt. I had everything I ever wanted in life, and I was hurt inside. And so I sat down one day with myself, and I was like, what are these fears that are holding you back, and how do we move through them? And that began this journey. You know, fear is like a brick wall. Every time you turn away from that fear, you place another brick on that wall. Every time you say, no, I can't do that. No, that's too much. Every time you turn away, you place another brick on that wall. The wall begins to strengthen. The wall gets stronger. But this wall is all in your mind. If you don't place that brick, the wall doesn't exist. Every time you take a step forward, the wall crumbles. The only power in the wall is you placing the bricks, you doing the fears. Find somebody to share your fears with. Find yourself a life passion that you believe more than anything else. And if it's not there, start talking to people because it'll come out. When you find that passion and that purpose, then you can go on your mission and share with all honesty. I'm here to share with you my honest fears. I am deathly afraid of this moment, but I know I have to go on this journey because I'm going to become a professional speaker. And here's what I've learned about the brain. You can replace any image in your brain, no matter how traumatizing it is. You can add new memories. And with new technology like virtual reality, anything you see in your brain exists. Anything you put in your mind is your reality. So why can't we fill our minds with amazing new experiences and memories? Why don't we focus that superpower, that amazing alert system, into personal growth. If we turn that fear system that stops all of this movement 
into this movement, we would achieve everything we were looking for. Fear separates people. Walls separate people. All right? Slowly building, slowly building. <laughs> if you kick down those walls with your mind, that is a superpower. Name your fears. Embrace your fears. And add new memories to it. When you do that, then you're using your superpower to achieve your ultimate dreams. Thank you.